Joining us now with Inside Analysis, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz, who's also the author of the book, Get Trump, The Threat to Civil Liberties, Due Process, and Our Constitutional Rule of Law. Professor Dershowitz, always a pleasure to see you. It seems like Attorney General Letitia James, who campaigned on the promise, uh, the, is the title of your book, To Get Trump, is succeeding with this judge, Arthur Angoran. Uh, I mean, he's a judge. There's no jury. He could be the executioner, if you will, in some way, because this is a huge financial blow if it goes forward. Well, the issue is this. The judge says that the assessments are too high. He thinks that Mar-a-Lago is worth between 18 and $27 million. I'll tell you what, I'll buy it. I'll borrow money. Buy it at that price anytime and sell it for 10 times that amount. So there's a dispute. Whose assessment is correct? The judge's assessment or Trump's assessment? And who's going to decide? Duh. The very judge whose assessment is in question. This case ought to be in front of a jury. It ought to be on television. It ought to be fairly analyzed, not part of the quote, get Trump posse. You know, my book was not named originally. It, I, it, it's, it comes from her campaign promise. She promised to right. get Trump, and now she is getting Trump, and she got the right judge to get Trump. And he doesn't want the public to see what he's doing in that courtroom. He was perfectly happy to pose and smile, smile. Mm -hmm. glasses off, to look a little better. But when it came to having the American public assess whether justice is happening in that courtroom or whether it's part of the get right. Trump, a partisan political. doesn't want that by the American No, clearly not. And you just said everything that should be happening that is not happening regarding uh, cameras in the courtroom and being a jury. But let's talk about this. So if she said she came out on the steps this morning, Professor Dershowitz, saying it was her duty to do this, that the law is, you know, uh, something she has to uphold, that it is it is fragile. And yeah, it's fragile depending on who wields it and powerful. And it seems like she's wielding a lot of power. But if there was fraud, shouldn't these big banks be the one bringing a civil claim? Who's the victim here? Two hundred and fifty million dollars for for what and to whom well there must be a hundred real estate um, moguls in new york who have inflated the value of their uh, properties for purposes of getting a loan or other purposes but she's targeted only donald trump if she went after every single real estate person she might say no one's above the law but what she's basically saying is donald trump is below the law we're going to apply a different standard uh, to him, and and we don't want the public to see it. We, we we're pa perfectly happy to have press conferences. We're perfectly happy to state our case uh, in the court of public opinion. But we don't want the public to actually see the trial because the trial itself has to be very very unfair. Now you know we don't know for sure. Uh, maybe it'll be a paradigm of fairness. She's already held the lawyers sanctionable because they repeated an argument that he rejected it. I do that all the time. I'm always repeating arguments that try right. because I'm or I preserve the issue for appeal. If you don't repeat it, you know what's gonna happen? The Court of Appeals will say, well they abandoned the argument. You didn't the bring it up. Lawyer in contempt. Holding the lawyer sanctionable because he repeated a sound legal argument. And the argument they made is a sound legal argument, namely that you uh, don't hold a person guilty of criminal-like fraud without so, any without anybody. It sounds like he's up against, you know, a almost impossible situation here. We've been talking so much, Professor Dershowitz, about the four indictments here. But this civil fraud case, this is the one maybe that financially could cripple him right now as he's in the middle of running a campaign. He's in the middle of, of fighting these indictments. Uh, many people say, no doubt, this is to inflict financial uh, possible ruin to him. But clearly, he has a strong defense. What will, what will rule out, though, as he, as he fights? He has to appeal. That could take a long time. Well, here's the strategy, and I laid it out very carefully in Get Trump, and all of the predictions I made in Get Trump have turned out to be true. The goal of the Get Trump posse is simply to get him guilty, found liable before the election. Then they'll be reversed after the election. They don't care. Their goal is to influence the election negatively toward Donald Trump. Look, I'm not a Trump supporter. I want to see Trump lose in a fair election where there is no thumb of Democratic-appointed politicians on the scale. 
And that's not going to happen. If these uh, efforts succeed, if they take away all of his money and all of his resources, if they try to take him off the ballot under the 14th Amendment, if they go after him for crimes that never, ever have been prosecuted before, like the New York crime of not disclosing hush money on a corporate form, my God, Alexander Hamilton would have been put in jail under that theory. American justice system today uh, is is quite appalling when you see this case and how it's playing out. Professor Dershowitz, thanks for joining us today. We'll continue to uh, have you back as we watch this case, which may last until December, continue on. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you.